on folks uh, this is Keith and you're watching Barbara's Auto Help today I'm going to show you how to use a block tester to test for combustion gases in your cooling system uh, you want to use a block tester to find out if possibly you have a blown head gasket cracked head or in rare instances maybe a cracked block so let's go ahead and get into it so this is the whole get up here you have this uh, like cylinder here with a, a cone on it and on this end you got an open orifice and you'll have this little bulb with open it on one side and a check valve on the other. Uh, this little bulb goes into there and you're supposed to uh, squeeze the bulb to pull air in through this orifice here. Through uh, your fluid, your special uh, block, flu block tester fluid, and that'll pull uh, gases from the cooling system through the liquid and if you have any uh, combustion gases in the cooling system it will re react with that fluid and change it from a nice uh, kind of a sky blue color to a, a really nice uh, yellow uh, bright yellow color so it will be pretty obvious if you do have an exhaust uh, uh, leak in the cooling system or a, a blown head gasket and you got combustion uh, gases in the cooling system it'll be very obvious by using this uh, I like to use this kit because it, it leaves a little room for doubt so you, if you got uh, a change in color you got exhaust gases in the cooling system. Now to start out with, uh, go ahead and make sure your cooling system is nice and cool. Uh, take your radiator cap off and check to see if the water is all the way up to the top of the uh, the radiator neck here. If it is, you want to take and siphon some of that uh, some of that coolant out so that when you have your your uh, tester down in the radiator neck like this, you won't suck up any uh, any coolant and contaminate your fluid then you have to start all over again so you want a good amount of room between the the level of the coolant and the the, uh, the uh, top of this neck here so go ahead and siphon that out if you need to and uh, if you got it to the correct level go ahead and add your block testing fluid to your your tester here fill it up to that little yellow line there and then you're going to crank your vehicle up and uh, get it warm uh, according to the uh, instructions on this particular tester I've got it says to test for uh, exhaust gases in the cooling system when the engine is warm so we're going to go ahead and crank it up and by the way uh, do wear safety glasses while you're doing this uh, and use extreme caution when you're dealing with cooling systems there's always a chance that things could uh, get overheated and blow up on you, so you got to be very careful when you're doing this, okay? And off the screen here, I've got this bulb in there. After it gets warm, I'm going to start squeezing the bulb, and that's going to pull that uh, that gas through that chemical, and hopefully we'll get a reaction. But we're going to let it warm up real quick. All right, so we got it warmed up. Go ahead and start drawing some air across that. You want to do it for about two minutes according to the instructions. Bright yellow. It's not blue anymore, so 
uh, whenever exhaust gases uh, come in contact with that chemical or that uh, fluid, it'll change from blue to yellow. And that's how you know you got exhaust gas in your cooling system. Okay, so you got a V8 engine or a V6 engine and you're not sure which side has the blown head gasket, cracked head or cracked lock. There's a couple of things you can do to help you identify where your problem's at. Uh, one, one thing you can do is disable cylinders and retest. Uh, typically you want to do it uh, on one cylinder at a time and maybe start out with the first cylinder, disconnect the fuel injector on that cylinder uh, and then retest and see if you have any combustion chemicals in the, uh, the cooling system. You of course want to scavenge all that nasty gas out of there from the time before when you tested. Get that out of there then retest and see if it passes. If it passes and you got the number one cylinder disconnected, uh, the fuel injector disconnected, then you know that's where your problem was at. And then you want to move on down the line, uh, do it with number one, number two, number three, and number four. Uh, the tester that I have actually says to disable one whole, one whole head or one whole side of the engine, but uh, I, it's going to be hard to have an engine, a V8 engine, run on just four cylinders on one side. So uh, you can do it one at a time. You can also change it up and maybe do it two at a time too. Uh, doing it this way though, you, you may hopscotch over it, uh, uh, the actual problem uh, potentially. Sometimes a cylinder head will blow in between cylinders and uh, not only will gases get into the cooling system but also gases will be exchanged from cylinder to cylinder so uh, doing it one at a time you may potentially miss that. Uh, I'm not sure I'm not sure if that would actually be the case but uh, just theoretically in my mind it's a possibility but hey, this is one way to do it. You don't have to do it this way but uh, you know if, if you're disabling cylinders on one head and then you test again and, and the coolant or the uh, block tester doesn't change colors you know you had a problem on that head because you're not making those gases anymore because the fuel source is missing. Um, also uh, another way you can uh, determine which side or another way that can help you determine which side has the problem is uh, typically when you got combustion gases getting into the cooling system it's probably in some cases going to be accompanied by misfire codes uh, because you're losing compression and uh, when you don't have adequate compression you may have a power imbalance or maybe uh, a misfire and anything past 1996 will have misfire codes 1 through 8 or 1 through 10 whatever whatever size engine you got there. So scan your computer, see see what misfire code you have. Uh, say you got a, a code 301, which is a cylinder one misfire. Um, that cylinder is suspect. Uh, you know, go ahead and disconnect the fuel injector on that cylinder, and then and then retest the uh, the first way. Make sure that the exhaust gases aren't getting into the cooling system. If they're not after disconnecting that, then that's probably where your problem is at. Also, you could take your, your uh, spark plug out, inspect it for uh, coolant contamination. Um, now, not all the time when you have a blown head gasket in this way will uh, coolant actually get into the combustion chamber. It's kind of funky that way. Sometimes it does. Uh, but sometimes it'll only allow gases to go out and not allow coolant to come back in. But you could take that, that spark plug out and inspect it for any kind of contamination, coolant contamination. Usually uh, you'll see it, it's real clean and it may have maybe a green tinge to it or a yellow tinge to it, or excuse me, maybe an orange tinge to it uh, from the coolant. And uh, also if you look at the top of the cylinder, if it's an older vehicle, uh, the top of the cylinder may not have a whole lot of uh, carbon built up on it. Uh, on your older vehicles you have carbon on top of that piston. And if you look down in there, it's nice and clean. You're probably getting coolant in there, and it done clean that uh, that top of that piston off. That's probably a good indication you got something going on there too. Um, also, sometimes you'll lose compression. Uh, you're always, if you're getting combustion chemicals into the or combustion gases into the cooling system, you're losing some amount of compression. But uh, you could do a manual compression test and see if there is a, a difference between the cylinders. Uh, if you notice that cylinder number one is, is way down compared to the other cylinders, you got a problem, you need to go into further diagnostics. Uh, but sometimes when you got a blown head gasket, you may not notice that much of a difference. Uh, it all depends on the severity of the, uh, uh, the leak. So it's all relative, uh, you know, th this is a pretty superficial video here. It's not meant to uh, be totally comprehensive. Realistically, this is kind of superficial. I want to give you some ideas uh, to, to go by and something that will help you. So 
anyway, I appreciate you guys watching. Thank you so much. If you have any questions, comment in the description below, or actually comment below the video here, and uh, I'll be happy to get back to you. Like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Also, if this was especially helpful to you, you're welcome to contribute to my channel. Uh, you could just hit the support button up on the top right-hand corner of the video here. It's a little iCard. Uh, click on that. You can make a dollar donation, five dollar donation, whatever. And if you don't want to donate, that's fine too. Uh, I'm just glad my videos can help somebody. And I do appreciate you watching. Thank you so much, guys.